You're listening to the Loving Your Own Soul podcast, and I'm your host, Britt Olson. Guided by my own intuition, my intention is to deliver genuine conversations centered around health and wellness, spirituality, self-expression, and culture. In this space, I will provide you with real-life stories, theories, and inspiring perspectives to help you uncover and tap into your own true potential. I'm so grateful you've chosen to tune in with me on this mindful exploration to living a more fluid life through a deeper connection to the soul. Now let's dive into today's journey. What's up, everyone, and welcome back to my weekly digest. It's been a couple weeks, and I am so excited to bring you this weekly digest here today. Every Thursday, I will digest and decode a different health and wellness, spiritual, or cultural topic so that you can better understand and feel more on trend in the ever-changing world we live in. This week, I will be giving you the download on how to use your white privilege to be an ally for those being discriminated against in the workplace. As always, please do not forget that I am not claiming to be an expert in any of these areas, do not currently hold any licenses, or consider myself a trained professional in any areas that we speak of. This episode simply stems from theories, research from qualified professionals, and my own findings and opinions on the areas we discuss. For any specific questions or topics you'd like to see on here, feel free to email me at lovingyourownsoul at gmail.com, or you can also connect with me on Instagram at lovingyourownsoul and comment on my latest Instagram post or send me a direct message. So, Today, workplace, career, career talk has really been the energy this week, which is kind of interesting, but I'm just going to keep rolling with it. Definitely no coincidences. Everything has a beautiful synergy that we know it to. But yeah, I had just released a new show on Tuesday about a girl, Jackie, up in Chicago, pivoting from a COVID layoff to launching a new business in the midst of a pandemic. I just did an interview with an intuitive career coach, which that episode will be launching here in a couple weeks. And on top of it, have been doing my own work on some different career shifts and things that I have coming up here in the near future. And then this past weekend actually had a beautiful conversation about racism and how to be anti-racist with an old coworker of mine. Lots of career energy going on right now, but I kind of like it. I'm sitting in it. But what I would like to chat with you all about today is how we can better use our white privilege to be allies for those being discriminated against in the workplace. So as I mentioned this past weekend, I had a super honest conversation with an old coworker of mine from a previous employer. This old coworker is a black woman. She is so sweet. She's really, really talented. She's just super, super nice. I've actually been getting to know her a little bit more now online compared to when we work together in the workplace. We didn't have too many personal situations that really took place, but in the little bit um, that we did get to work with her, definitely connected with her, thought she was just such, just such a nice person, just so genuine, very clean, clean energy, which is rare to find in people. Anyway, I want to chat about this conversation that we had because I say I used to work alongside her at an old employer is how I would phrase it. But I say work alongside in quotes because during that period, I held a huge blind spot to our relationship and the two differing relationships both of us held with our boss and owner of the company at that time. With this friend, this black woman, friend of mine, I just, I loved her ability to really open up with me this last weekend, teach me and just share so much truth behind what had taken place and how I can be a better person. And then in exchange, that's why I'm sharing this story here. So that way you all can learn from it, take something from it, and hopefully be better people as well, because this is a very natural situation that we are all 
unfortunately privy to as there are a lot of blind spots that we hold in our lives. So you guys can understand what I'm talking about because you're probably like, all right, what the heck at this point? Um, let me give a little bit of context to my story and then I will give you my friend's story. And as I'm not going to for privacy reasons, going to share her name, I am going to give my friend a fake name. We'll call her Rachel. Rachel, who was, who is my friend, a and an old coworker of mine. She is a black woman, woman of color. However, you would like to term it, whatever dialogue works for you. So my story. I was hired. I was in a bit of a changing of tides um, at the time. Decided to take on a little bit of extra work as I was working through a few things at an employer and. My friend Rachel, who she had been previous, she was working there before me. We were not friends before that. We didn't know each other. We met working for this employer. She had been hired a bit before me, so I was the newbie. The boss, from my point of view at the time, she definitely seemed to favor me in a way, which was, I mean, complimentary. You know, who doesn't like to get that little extra pat on the back? It feels good. Nobody's going to deny that. That's human nature. But I did notice that in different situations, I felt overly favored. And in then being in group situations with other employees and things like that at this place, I did notice that this woman, Rachel, was kind of like the odd man out a little bit. Our boss, she didn't seem to favor Rachel the way she favored me and some of the other women who worked within the company. Rachel was, um, yeah, it just felt like There was a little bit of tension there. For me, I had just gotten out of an awful working relationship with an employer, went through a huge area of just a disconnection from myself at that period of time. So I was very, very sensitive to ways of different bullying and ways of just everyone not feeling like they were equally part of the group. So I I noticed what was taking place between our boss and Rachel. However, given what I had just been through... I viewed it as Rachel must have done something incorrectly. She must have messed up on a project. Something must have happened between these two that the boss is just holding a grudge over Rachel's head and kind of passively, aggressively letting her know that she does not approve of whatever whatever took place. I was like, something went on here. There's definitely not congruent energy happening between them. Rachel feels like she's kind of being the odd man out. And I just honestly looked at it as that. With Rachel being black, it never crossed my mind once that it might be a race issue, that she might be being discriminated against in the workplace. Like I said, I kind of had my own PTSD from a lot of unfair treatments that went on with different female coworkers and leaders at a previous company of mine. So I just figured man, like, Rachel, I feel for you because I've, I never vocalized this, but in my head, I was like, I feel for you. I've been in that situation and I just am not comfortable when people hold grudges over people. I think that we all need to, something happens, take it, learn from it and move on. Holding a grudge and different judgments is just really, really icky. It's not worth that bad energy that comes with it. So for me, that also gave me a little bit of a weird taste in my mouth because I was already feeling a little bit overly favored there and then seeing what I viewed to be somebody holding a grudge. I, um, I just felt uneasy about the situation. Meanwhile, I ended up leaving that employer, not working for them any longer for good reason as I learned. All right, so let's get to Rachel's side of the story. So Rachel was hired before me, I actually don't know the time frame of it. I just know that she was hired before me. I don't think that she was there long, so I wouldn't say it was like years before me, but a period of time before me. Needless to say, I was the young, lowest one on the ladder at the time with that employer. Rachel, who is so, so talented from, oh my gosh, really kind of all areas of marketing, from editing, graphics, web design, content management, writing, just a whole bunch of things. I don't want to butcher or demean um, any of her skill sets. But yes, yeah, she, she was a black woman working for a white woman in a workplace of all white women. She was the only black woman working there. In her experience, she was not given access to 
different drives that everyone else had access to, so she could not access all of the company files, whether it was photos, graphics, content, everything like that. She was never given full access. She had requested to help out, go above and beyond her current role, and that she noticed there were some issues with maybe photos or graphics and things offered to be of assistance, change them. Hey, you know, maybe you don't know that I can do this, but guess what I can? If you want, I'd be more than willing to take that project on. Pretty normal requests and was not given the ability to do so. She, they had actually thrown me, her birthday was a bit before my birthday. I think maybe like a month before, a couple weeks before. I know it's near, near mine. We might even both be in Aries. I will have to double check with her on that one. But anyway, regardless, her birthday was right before mine. They had thrown me a birthday luncheon. She was not notified of the birthday luncheon until that morning of it. She, they did not give her a card or anything for their, for her birthday. They had given me a card and things for my birthday. Meanwhile, she was hired before me. Now, mind you as well, this is, we're all working remote. We're not in the workplace. Um, We go in for meetings, client meetings, things like that, but we are, none of us are actually in the workplace. What else did she tell me that took place? Yeah, she was included in different promotions, client, um, facing events and things like that was just treated very, very unfairly and poorly. Was never even allowed, wasn't really invited to a lot of events, couldn't do certain things with clients. And she had brought it up to the employer asking, you know, what was um, going on. She didn't quite understand why, you know, why would you bring me on if you're not willing to utilize me to my full potential, which completely agree with. I've been in roles where I haven't been utilized to my full potential. And I was like, all right, what the heck? Why did you even like, why are you paying me right now? You're not getting full use out of me. But anyway, I digress. And the people at the workplace came back to her and said, I hope you are not making this a race thing. Now, mind you, She never brought it up, Rachel, never brought it up and called it a race thing. Never brought up her race. So she made the decision to leave, start over, have to go find a new job because this was not a workplace situation that was tolerable for her. Now, this weighed really, really heavily on me for a couple of different reasons. Number one being that I was not aware of what was taking place within a place that I worked. Now, I told you I noticed that there was a difference going on between the two of them. Like I said, I could feel, you know, things are not aligned. She's not being treated equally. However, I never in a million years would have considered that to be racial discrimination or discrimination in the workplace because of her race. However, by being given that piece of information, I realized 100% it was definitely a race thing. Like, that is the only thing that would make sense. And that is so hard for me to comprehend and for me to understand. It also is kind of sickening as well for me to think that I was not fully aware of my surroundings. Well, I was. I, I guess what I'm trying to point out is that I was, I would view myself as innocent to the situation. However, I'm not innocent to the situation because I wasn't looking at it from that standpoint. I was looking at it from what I know with my white privilege of, oh, everyone's nice. Everyone's good. You know, racial discrimination was not at the top of my list of things to look out for or understand how frequently that takes place in relationships. I was blinded and while it was only natural, I'm not going to beat myself up about it. I do. I feel bad about it. It's really, it's an interesting thing to look back at situations and understand what you were not taking from the situation when you clearly notice that something was not right about the situation. For me, I was only aware of my surroundings and my inner knowing in my head. And also, I think as well, what I was willing to look at. I would have to go deeper into it, but maybe there is something super far deep down underlying inside of me that comes from ancestors or past lives or whatever that I wasn't willing to look that way. I have to really separate my mind and my heart. But in my heart, I knew that something wasn't right. And yes, of course, I was only aware of my surroundings, my inner knowing stories and dialogues that I had just experienced. So 
while that may not be right in the grand scheme of things, it's also natural. We're only human. But now where I sit today, I have a new awareness, a new outlook and understanding, etc., which is so great. You know, we're always students, so definitely want to always continue the journey of learning and unraveling and all the beautiful moments that life throws at us so that way we can be better. So anyway, I'm chatting with my friend Rachel this past weekend, and I asked her, first of all, I was dumbfounded. I think a lot of holy shit came out in the conversation because I had no idea. Yet at the same time as she was speaking, it was like light bulbs went off and suddenly it made so much sense. Because like I said, I could feel that disconnect of the energy. And as she was telling me all of this, all I could think of is, okay, what can I, how can I be better in future situations moving forward? Because while I would love to say, you know, we're not, you're never going to have that situation again. I'm never going to be in that situation again. I can almost guarantee you we will, because while we are in the midst of a revolution, things are going to take time. So my friend Rachel, she was willing to chat with me about this and take the conversation a step further. And I said, in moving forward, what can I do? What should I have done now that I have this awareness? What can I do to be an ally for you, a black woman or a woman of color who is being mistreated by the white? How can I utilize my white privilege to help you and stand up for you? What she said, it's really simple. It's not rocket science, what I'm about to tell you guys, but I do think it is important for everyone to know coming from her perspective and what she, a black woman in a dominantly white workforce, would want to see. And first of all, she said, do not apologize for their behavior. When you see discrimination taking place or someone brings up to you that they've been discriminated against, don't apologize for the other person. It's so easy for us to give that immediate reaction of, oh, I'm sure it's not like that, or I'm sure they didn't mean it. I'm sorry. It's okay. No, like don't apologize. Because while we, you know, it's easy to try to see the good in people and not look at the dark side, racism and discrimination exists in so many more of our fellow peers and neighbors than I think we knew previously or maybe have been willing our own willing to open our eyes to see. So do not apologize for their behavior. Take responsibility and stand up against it. If you see something, say something. Speak up and do not sit back in silence. We need to be there for our friends of the Black community, the Hispanic community, Black, Brown, different ethnicities, whatever have you, even if a gay man or a gay woman is being discriminated against in the workplace as well, it's the exact same thing. Stand up for them. You know, we're here in Pride Month. Stand up for our brothers and sisters. We are all human. We all have feelings and emotions. So stand up for them. And as well, the person on the other side who's doing the discriminating or is holding the racist viewpoints or whatever it may be, you never know what your voice may open up for him or her. You know, I can sit here and say he or she may not understand what they're doing or even where this dialogue that's coming out of their mouth or feelings that's coming from them is coming from. We might be able to help them open up and do some inner work to uncover it. But at the same time, again, that's me slightly bridging that gap of starting to apologize for him or her because it's not okay. What does matter is that we stand up for our brothers and sisters our community of color, no matter what the skin tone is, and help make change. Because their voices, they go unheard. While like my friend Rachel, she she opened up the conversation, which is also a very brave thing to do. It's so much easier just to sit back and let people kind of uh, bully us for lack of a better word versus to stand up and say that this is not okay. This is not right right now. But their voices they go unheard or taken out of context or used against them because of the judgment that is already being placed on them. So as a white person using my white privilege, we know, and this is not me some new knowing, this is just based on historical context and situational, a white person's voice will be heard differently than the voice of a black person or a person of color. So We need to utilize our white privilege to stand up for them, to be an ally. Be an ally 
in the workplace because our voices will more than likely be taken more seriously or at least even provide a different insight to try to mend the judgment and the wounds being incurred. We all need to do the work and we need to be, we need to become allies for those who are out there because they need us. We've all sat back in silence and been quiet for way too long and it's time to make a change for that. And I'm making a change starting with myself. I mean, this situation and conversation completely opened my eyes to something that I sat oblivious to at a point in time and I never want to sit oblivious again. I hope you found that insightful and can kind of take an open awareness to your own situations or past blind spots and how to move forward in your own lives and experiences as you go about your daily life through career in the workplace and really all areas of life. This is contextual to a workplace situation, but really this applies to all areas of life. As always, thank you for listening. I hope you all enjoyed your time today, and I'm so grateful you tuned in to this weekly digest. Mm-hmm.